thank you so much, uh, Kim and Lynn and everyone from uh, Arlington Street. And uh, it's great to be here and sharing these thoughts in this community. Uh, thank you to Dorothy and everyone who's been lifting up this fascinating story of Margaret Fuller uh, so effectively for the past year. I, I really feel honored and privileged uh, to be playing this small, this small part in uh, this wonderful unfolding story of a woman who in some ways is more alive now uh, uh, than ever because of, because of your work. Uh, and I also wanted to say a word of, of thanks and, um, and honor uh, to Paul Sawyer, um, someone that many of you uh, know, a uh, passionate admirer of Margaret Fuller, a uh, passionate champion of peace and justice in our Unitarian Universalist tradition, uh, who died uh, last summer um, uh, with his enthusiasm uh, for, uh, for Fuller's revolutionary vision uh, is really behind it, much of what I have to say uh, today. My topic is Margaret Fuller in 1848, but I'd like to begin with something that happened in 1872 to another great woman in our heritage, Jane Addams. Here's how Addams told the story almost 40 years after the fact. An incident which stands out in my mind, an incident which stands out in my mind as an exciting suggestion of the great world of moral enterprise occurred when I was not yet 12 years old. I came into my father's room one morning to find him sitting beside the fire with a newspaper in his hand, looking very solemn. And upon my eager inquiry what had happened, he told me that Joseph Mazzini was dead. I'd never even heard Mazzini's name. And after being told about him, I was inclined to grow argumentative, to asserting that my father did not know him, that he was not an American, and I could not understand why we should be expected to feel badly about him. <laughs> It's impossible to recall the conversation with a complete breakdown of my chief arguments. But in the end, I obtained that which I have ever regarded as a valuable possession. A sense of the genuine relationship which may exist between people who share large hopes and large desires, even though they differ in nationality, language, and creed. I was heartily ashamed of my meager notions of patriotism, and filled with pride that I knew a man who held converse with great minds and who really sorrowed and rejoiced over happenings across the sea. All of you who are Margaret Fuller junkies, who have attended every event sponsored by every Bicentennial Committee, <laughs> you already know what this little story has to do with Margaret Fuller in 1848. Joseph Mazzini was the inspiring, deeply spiritual leader of the failed Italian Revolution of 1848-49. When Americans were despairing that our own heritage of freedom was being destroyed by the slave power in the South and the plutocracy in the North, Mazzini offered fresh hope. If democracy was possible in the seat of imperial Rome, it surely was still possible on this side of the Atlantic. Jane Addams' father, 26 years old and newly settled on the Illinois frontier, was one of the idealists who was inspired by Messini. He went on to play a role in founding uh, the anti-slavery Republican Party in Illinois. Most likely, the newspaper that young Jane Addams saw in her father's hand was the New York Tribune. This is the paper edited by Horace Greeley that kept folks in far-flung locations like Cedarville, Illinois, informed of social change movements around the world. And the journalist who had first introduced Mazzini to Tribune readers, and most likely to Adam's father, way back in 1847, was, of course, Margaret Fuller, who first met him when he was an exile in Rome, in, in exile in London. Then, after traveling to Italy, uh, she made Mazzini's cause of national liberation her own, both by tending the victims of war in a hospital and by sending dispatches back to New York that conveyed the ideals and the human costs of the freedom struggle. 